Please be advised. Spoiler alert episode. Spoiler. Please be advised. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the It Spoiler app. Um, we're ready. We're ready, ready to go. Ready to get into it. Just so, all right. So at the top, we always have to say this. This is if you're your first time ever listening to a comedy film read spoiler up. We're going to talk about the movie It, and we're going to talk about the ending and key plot points. So if you have not seen the movie and you don't want it spoiled for you, I would suggest hitting the pause button and getting yourself to a cineplex near you. We may even start with the ending. We're going to start. We got to start. With uh, the ending. But Here, first, let's talk about our ad. Oh, we do. Have we have a Patreon supporter, frightfully uninformed, a podcast. That watches mostly classic horror movies to figure out horror movie fandom, frightfullyuninformed.com. You get that for the $50 level, guys. We'll read your your URL, your business on every episode, yep. spoiler. and uh, One of the fans actually uh, tweeted a picture of their playlist, and it was comedy film nerds, frightfully uninformed, and conversations from the abyss. It fantastic. Was, uh, so uh, you guys are listening. We appreciate Outstanding. it. Outstanding. Why don't you add political vigilante and to add that political list. vigilante. Come on, you Please do. Bitches. Uh, all right, uh, with us at the All Things Comedy World Headquarters is Dave Anthony. Um, David, how are Stuck you? Stuck around. I'm yep. good. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> now let's talk about it. Let's talk about, the first of all, I the ending. The ending. Okay, because really, it's not the ending. It's really like the first half of the story. Uh, this is where I right. personally, and w- we talked about this in the regular episode, but when I was having problems with the the length, I thought it was it, it's two, fif- two hours and 15 minutes right. or whatever, and they should have cut around 30 minutes out in my opinion. I was like, if you're going to spend two hours and 15 minutes, I thought they were going to at least cut. I was like, oh, because I was looking at my watch and I'm like, um, <laughs> I was <laughs> like, this is... They're going to cut to 27 years for where they're all like someone's going to get a call like they're going to be in all their different lives around the country or whatever. And someone's going to go right. the, the wells back open or whatever. Crazy clowns back. Um, so I, I, this is where I, I wanted. Was to, there a stinger at the end of the movie? I, we didn't stick around. I didn't stick. around. I didn't stick around either. I'm gonna, I'll, I'll Google and see if there was a stinger. Um, right. OK, so oh, the problem with that is, is the book's too long. Right. There's I mean, no the story's could... too big. It's almost too big to do. The way they're doing it, it's really a mini series, um, and that's what happened in the '90s. They made that mini series yeah, with terrible. the kids and then the uh, um, the uh, the adults. But uh, now I, I did have a question because sometimes the rules got me a little confused. Like I could tell, like oh, there's no extras st- during the credits. No extras. During the only the thing they show is at the very end they go chapter one, so they right. end the movie on we've just started this. Yeah, yeah. and uh, there was a, an audible gasp in the uh, theater, like what? Yeah. Really? Well, you yeah, saw the was. clown go down the well. They did they kill him? Because no. there, there's also a lot of people who didn't read the book and just had no idea that there's another part of the but story. But didn't you knew that's where he came from? So if he went back down the well, then and he was alive, then he was back in his place. Right. I mean, right. they didn't kill him, and so. you knew it was like all, it was close to being the end of his the cycle, y- the year, yeah, his year yeah, his of murder, locust cycle. his locust yeah. cycle. Yeah, so they beat but, him back this year, but he'll come back next. So year. now, uh, my question is, and this maybe this it gets explained in the book, like um, if they weren't afraid of him, like the girl mm-hmm. who was it, Rebecca or whoever mm-hmm. it was, mm-hmm. uh, she wasn't afraid of him. So then he actually sniffs her. So is that something where he can smell fear, then he can't feed on her if she's not I've, afraid? But then he opens his mouth and uses hypnotonsils, and then she starts floating, but she's yeah. I didn't. I mean, her. I didn't. I didn't understand the floating thing, and I, 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 I assume that's like the version of a spider using its web to hold things that it's going to eat later. Mm-hmm. Um, but I didn't understand the hypnotizing thing with the. Okay. I didn't either. So well, that's that's, that's really where that's where book. you get into Stephen King crazy shit. Like, there's always a Stephen King in these sort of stories that he does, where it's just batshit insane. <laughs> and so, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> cocaine's a hell of a drug. <laughs> yeah, Tommy Knockers is like the best example of how just batshit crazy a book can go. Like, you're just reading, going, "What just happened?" Um, so he's got these things in his books that's that's like that that you just kind of have to go, "All right." It's a it's, it's a, a new rule. It's that a we're hypnotizing just t- tonsil. Yeah. 
Um, you know, to me, it's just like, well, all right, he has a power that co- that causes them to go unconscious, and then you know, and then he can float them up and wait to eat them later. Like mm-hmm. that. That's how I saw it. You know, it's it's like a it's like he's he's catching his food to eat for twenty seven years. You know, right? Oh, okay. Um, I mean, I did like the that was more of an explanation than I got from the scene. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it's one of those things where you, because of the length of the movie, you can't really go into it what they actually wanted to mean um right. so it's just kind of there you know so then the the end of the movie too where they the kids are all floating around that crazy you but know, they were bodies i mean those were kids that he already eaten right well, were they no were he they... killed or or he had them in some sort of stasis like she he didn't kill her but she right. was gonna float up so that felt like then they started to come down but we didn't ever get like the resolution of oh they've saved all these kids or people? i think it was just bodies i thought around. it was just bodies because uh, i felt like those are the ones that were afraid that he ate, and then this is like the first kid that wasn't afraid that he couldn't eat, then he just hypnotized and put up. That's kind of the impression I got. Everyone else that was floating was already a corpse. Yeah, they were dead. Hmm. Well, I, there was a lot of... Um... Except for the zombies that were chasing them in the sewer, the, that one kid in the sewer. <laughs> I, I think that was all... Um... Imagination. Uh, oh, that was part of that was clown tricks. Yeah, that was that okay. was sort of your fear and and him using his powers to scare them. Got it. Okay. It, the, the the I'll buy it. That that stuff was so cool. The how it would the you know the the clown would cater to your individual fears. So like that picture that was so oh, creepy. God, that, that woman with that bendy creep face. <laughs> I know. That fuck. was. Oh mm-hmm. God, it was just like. Yeah, that was great. Um, it was all. It was just like so, so creepy. And then she comes to life with the teeth, right? And it was, it was such a like, because that's such a thing. As a kid, you'd be like, oh god, that photo, that painting creeps me out, and you right. build it up in your head. And I'm afraid to walk. Yeah, I'd run past it or whenever I was a kid, so that the the clown knows that, right? And then taps into that, and then makes the thing come out of the. There was so well, many. Well, like she's she's having her first period, and then blood's coming out of the covering the bathroom, like right. That kind of stuff is that well the done. The father couldn't see. Yeah. I know. That was nuts. And he couldn't see her becoming a woman. He wanted her as a... So he also can't see the blood coming out. Like, it's all related, and it's well done. You that know? was really well done. Yeah. And, and then the hair was coming out of the sink, the hair that she had actually cut off her head. Yeah. Because her dad liked her long hair, so yeah. she right. was like... Because um, clearly her dad was, was molesting Abusive. her. Yeah. Yeah. You know? And so, yeah, the, all the parents were awful. The one kid's mom... The big heavy set woman, the real overprotective crazy, the overprotective one. crazy one. She was just like that. And that um, that <laughs> that pharmacy owner, like he, that was every <laughs> creepy pharmacy owner you've ever seen in yeah. your entire life rolled into that one guy. Yeah, that was good and creepy. So I think I can, casting was good in this movie. Yeah. I can't say for sure, but because I haven't read the book in so long, but I believe it's like, you know, it, one of the themes is like a cycle of violence, right? So. It's sort of generational in this town, and What's the it, parents are all years? bad. Yeah, twenty-seven mm-hmm. years. So the parents are all fucked up because of what they went through as kids, and then it just keeps the cycle just keeps happening, right? So there are these kids who have no really good home or support system. So they're the ones in life who are victimized. So that's who the clown is preying upon: are these kids who are not getting good parenting. Did they yeah, go and then any... and then twenty seven years, then they become adults in twenty seven right. years, and then they're abusing their kids. And if yeah, they don't so leave it's, the town... it's it's the cycle of violence that we have. Now, in our did, was there any more backstory in the book about the clown that wasn't in the movie, like where it came from, like what? I like, believe what created it. It's just some sort of spirit that was there, right? As it's, I recall, well, it's an alien. It was an alien. Yeah. Oh, that's right. It is an alien. See, yeah. that's where Stephen King gets fucking wacky. Yeah, the end got a little weird. Um, it's just a fucking demonic clown alien. Yeah, I mean, it's it not. The shape of a clown, it's the yeah. shape that it takes, oh, but yeah. uh, and who knows? It also f- takes a spider, and yeah, the spider. I remember. Yeah. So it's just an alien that knows how to prey into your fears. Well, it it it's it's taken this form because our society views it that as a weird thing. But back in the day, like they were talking about the 1600s or whatever, whenever they first, then it might have been something else. You know, it, it just takes whatever form. Oh, I see. Did okay. the book have the thing that the movie did where, like, when they start going into the archive photos of the city and you'd see, like, a circus uh, wagon in the background and then you're, like, a, a creepy clown picture in the middle of some old black and white photo from the... Yeah. It, it had all that? Yeah. Because I, mean, I really love that. There and were then no I pictures also... in the book, but... Yeah, he painted the picture with words. Is <laughs> yeah. that what you mean? Yeah, yeah. What do you mean? There's no pictures in the book. It's not yeah. a picture book. 
<laughs> it should be. I mean, it should be. <laughs> Books that don't How long ago did you read it? Their illustrated like, version. Three years ago, maybe. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so you're a recent. Uh, yeah, yeah. Like yeah. So and it's cool too, because like in eleven twenty two sixty three, he goes he goes to that town as well. In oh, the that's 60s, right. Yeah. So it's really cool. Like because it starts in the does, doesn't it start as their kids in the fifties, right? Yeah, fifties or sixties. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, because they also did. Um, you know, we did some research on this, and there was a, a lot of little Easter eggs. Like uh, when when Richie Tozer is in the clown room, right? And there's all those mannequins. There's mm-hmm. one of them was dressed as the 1990 miniseries version of Pennywise that was played oh, by Tim Curry. Oh, uh, really? Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was just That's to the left great. of the screen. Yeah. Um, which was the creepiest room. Yeah, yeah, it was. Now you knew too when you saw all of those sheets. Well, they're going to come off in a second. Yeah, you know, <laughs> it's just a room full of yeah. figures with sheets. You're like, mm-hmm. only evil is under those sheets. <laughs> um, I want to ask you guys this. So, the did the the interaction between the kids? Because a couple times I was like, it got annoying, and I understand like that's how boys that age interact. Mm-hmm. I have three nephews, and they're. I thought it was very real the way yeah. they interacted. Maybe that was just me. As the uncle, so. when the kids came to visit, and there was a couple times I was like, "Just shut up! Stop fighting with each other about everything." Yeah. Um, oh no, that's exactly what that was. Right. Yeah, because that—that's how they talk to each other, and that's how they break each other's balls. Yeah. And, and then one punches it, it, the other one. Real. You're like, right? They punch each other. They yeah. fight, and then they don't, and then they're not. Yeah. That's. It, it, it was it total boy. It was. I thought it was really well done as far as that. And then the um, the scene swimming at the in the quarry or whatever. Yeah. That was where they referenced the turtle. Yes, which yeah. is which is hev- heavily featured in the book. Is that the, yeah? The, the, the what turtle. Was, what was the turtle's? Uh, what was the turtle in the end of the book? I don't remember. Uh, the turtle was like the good spirit helping the yeah. kids, right? But I don't remember what the turtle was. Like I, the so the the clown is an alien. Now it's making me want to read the uh, read the book because I've never read it. Just to kind of get all these this extra information. Yeah, I mean. <laughs> It's it's a good book. I mean, like I said, it's it, really long, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, it's super long. His his books really go, particularly the long ones. They go really fucking crazy at the end, and mm-hmm. it, it does like he says cocaine. I mean, it does have the feeling of a guy who's writing all night binging <laughs> on cocaine. And, and just I, I was always like, did he ta- did he talk to anybody about this? <laughs> What did you guys like? Have any editor just roll their eyes whenever that last chapter gets oh, delivered? It was. It's so clear that at some point the, uh, people were just like, "Yeah, no, go do what you want." <laughs> I mean, he's doing like a thousand-page books every year. Yeah, like yeah. After he retired, <laughs> yeah, he was like, "I'm not writing any more books and retired." I'm like, really? <laughs> what do you guys think that? Like, what were your favorite? Um, like, what were the scariest scenes for you? The I, scenes that resonated the most? I'll tell you, Out of the Gate was really off-putting and upsetting yeah. at the end. With the, when the little kid gets his arm bitten off and then just dragged it in the sewer. I'm like, oh, my God, game on immediately. Yeah, because yeah, really well I yeah. thought he was just going to get dragged or the right, kid would right. just disappear. No, no, they rip his arm off and there's blood in the rain-soaked street. Right. Well, and you're also like, it's one of the few times in a movie you're like, is this kid going to get away or is he not going to Like, usually you know if someone's going to get But right. I was like... No, this kid might get away because they were making it drag out so long, and he, right. the clown was acting in such a way that you're like, "Oh, he might not actually." Maybe he'll save him for later. Eat this, yeah. Eat yeah. this kid. This kid might run away, and then he starts going for the boat. You're like, "Don't go for the boat." Yeah. <laughs> Do you like popcorn? But then eating the arm was just fucking insane. Yeah, that, that was when his mouth opened up, and I was like, "Ah!" Like that was a, yeah. the whole theater screamed. Yeah. And that one, and that was like, "Wow, yeah. that is a great start to a movie." Right. You knew like. All right, this the, isn't this isn't gonna like tease you. I think the other scene that got me was uh, when they had the uh, film when the slide carousel when it started oh, yeah, going nuts good. and then all the images started coming up. I'm like, okay, this is gonna get crazy and then it's gonna actually look like a movie. But I didn't expect him to attack them there through that. Yeah, like, how I the thought, fuck did that? <laughs> like I was like, oh, well, maybe this is like a safe place that you know it's daytime and but that didn't matter and that surprised me and I was like, oh my god, he, he literally yeah. came out of the film. Yeah, the idea is, is that nowhere is safe because it's right. your fear. Yes. So it grew from their fear and it came out from their fear. Like that's where it gets its strength. Well, that was the other thing. The scene, one of the scenes that they creeped me out the most was when he goes down in the basement and he sees his little brother who's been missing for a year. And his little brother's like, um, it's, You'll it's, float too. You'll float too. You'll float too. You'll float yeah. too. Mm-hmm. And then the clown 
skitters across yeah. the water. I yeah. was like, oh, fuck. And then, and then Des like, ah, oh, I missed him. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like that little time. thing was just like, <laughs> for me, it was when the, uh, the kid with asthma was near the fucked up house and the like balloons were in a triangle and the clown was out back. I thought that was just super fucking creepy. Yeah, yeah, that was. There was a leper picks up the pill. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the so the balloon I feel like there was more to the balloon in the book. Like I There was. Cuz I I like I wasn't it wasn't introduced enough for me or wasn't explained enough. Do you know what the like it was, was in the library. Like remember like when right. the kid was The balloon would always stuff. show up when the clown was around as I recall. So the, it was like a almost foreshadowing that that Something. To the kids, like, oh, fuck, the clown's around. Right. Someone said they went to a, a movie and someone released a balloon. Oh. A balloon in the middle of it and everyone freaked oh out. <laughs> what a great idea. Do you, um, and so then the other thing, how is it explained in the book in terms of the kids are seeing these things and they're not actually happening, but they're affecting them? Like, they always, like, come back to reality and there's the adult going, hey, get out of there, or whatever. Well, it is real. I mean, the clown can hurt them, Um and I don't know what the explanation is, but look, they don't they don't have a they don't have a parent to tell or go to, so they're really just dealing with their own fear on their own. So it's sort of like they have to quash it on their own, or their fear envelops them. It's it's, I mean, it's about survival and surviving abuse, right? So if you let it consume you and overtake you, then you're dust. But if you fight it, then and, you get and don't let it and don't let it ruin you and and become stronger then you can beat it right right so uh i think that that's sort of it it can't hurt them like the blood is real there there's something about virginity though isn't there in the book or am i just not yeah, I remembering really that remember. correctly yeah i felt like the one of the reasons they fucked was it was something about virginity like kids could kid, so like the we, blood like so the, they could only is, see the blood cuz they were virgins so that may not be in the couldn't. book at all, is what you're saying. You may have made that up. It's well, they possible, mentioned the virgin but... <laughs> thing in the movie. They mentioned it in the film. They do, and I felt yeah. like that was an Easter egg that they mm. did that. I'd have to go back and... Yeah, I don't remember. I, I I, mean, I certainly remember that scene from the book where they all take turns having sex with the girl. Yeah. <laughs> Being, because it's so, like, left field almost. Yeah. But I do, I remember pretty strongly that it was catharsis for after... Yeah, they, I can't imagine. Least, maybe not that. after they killed the clown, but after they, they had gone through something super freaky. I can't imagine that. what the film would look like if they had shot that scene and put it in. Yeah, like that, there's like, no they, way. Like there's that no made, way you could. It, well, that's it the never that's the fit. last scene before it shifts to them being adults, right? Mm, I think in the book it shifts back to them being kids towards the end. Um, uh, no, you couldn't do that. In it. It, first of all, then it's rated X. Like you right. can't show <laughs> you can't show kids having sex. I was wondering what they were going to do, and and you know, a blood bond. They cut their hands. That's good enough. Yeah, we, blood we can, bond. We can we can end it. There. So <laughs> weird. If they, then they cut to them all having AIDS. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> It's the eighties. <laughs> they made the joke where the kid made that one joke. He's like, "Oh, it's AIDS. We're all gonna die." Like yeah. they make that joke mm-hmm. in there because it's the eighties. Yeah, and and then again, that's fear. Like everyone had the fear of the unknown. AIDS was very much an unknown then. What were all, the, it's yeah. all it's all about fear. The whole theme is what were the two afraid. movies on uh, uh, that were playing in the Cineplex? It was Batman and like Lethal Weapon Two or something. It was Lethal Weapon Two. It was Batman, and then it came back and it was Nightmare on Elm Street Five. Was oh one right, it was on the marquee um, when they came back later. Um, yeah, it was. It was. Uh, the other thing that you know, you're, you're uh, Dave. You're talking about the themes of like growing up in an abusive house and and w- how this movie was showing that that the parents aren't safe, that no one was safe. Like mm-hmm. that. The, and also, I like that scene. So there's the kid that's the big bully, and you really hate that kid. He's a bully. And then you see why he's a bully. Yeah, his dad's a bully. His dad's right. a cop. His dad shoots at this kid's feet. feet. Feet, yeah. And he's like, that's how you, what does he What does he say? He goes, that's how you take down a paper man, just show yeah. him a little fear. And yeah. it's like. Yeah. Well, was, uh, was that in the book, the, um, the TV show that was like really playing kind of in their minds where it was Pennywise 
creating the show is like kill him kill him oh, well, the tv show and one of the, the when the first time the tv show appeared in the film it was saying something in the background that it was right. like i forget what it was but it was like sort of explaining what was going on it, yeah it was literally it was some weird backstory that you were like oh wait that's what that's the, what i didn't notice that yeah yeah the yeah. first time it appears i was like the tv show was saying like well kids you know it's uh, it was something like um God, God damn! I'm forgetting now. I just saw the movie last night because they they show they throw so much. But it is. It. But it, it it was definitely like I'm like wait they're talking about what's going to happen to the yeah, kids. Yeah, she was something. I thought she was something like well, kids just you know, people disappear and it's okay yeah. or listen yeah, to your parents float, or something. You'll yeah. float too. Yeah, you'll float too. Yeah. They say something oh, like that. And you're yeah. just like wait what? Yeah. And then when, <laughs> yeah. the, when she tells him and he and he kills his dad. And I was like yeah because then all the kids and then every, the the show host and then Pennywise is is chanting pretty much kill him kill him kill him and he puts the knife in his dad's throat I mean it's yeah. a brutal way to kill your bully dad yeah yeah. Um, now you never find out what happens to that bully he, he falls down the well but you never see if he yeah dies clearly that's gonna be in the next movie he's gonna come back as some sort of zombie bully or something right. like that a zombie bully Zomb- <laughs> <laughs> so when you guys saw the ending the chapter yes. one ending were you like oh awesome or I knew just because I had remembered the TV miniseries mm-hmm. that there was a whole nother um, part of the story where they were adults so it didn't surprise me so uh, but what I thought this movie did a great job of is telling a complete story with these kids at this time frame like I didn't feel like it necessarily left on a cliffhanger I felt like I got a yeah. whole movie so now okay well now I can see the second part of the story and not feel cheated that I didn't get enough on this first part I mean the book is two stories right when they're kids and when they're adults 27 years later that's that's what it is so it mm-hmm. makes sense to me does the does the and then so then how are the adult children of abuse themes dealt with that I don't remember because I read it before I dealt with mine. <laughs> oh. <laughs> right. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I don't recall. I mean, I just remember that the the girl is being abused by her husband. Right. In their marriage. So. Right. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So the cycle, you know, it's about cycles, right? Mm-hmm. So I yeah, remember they're not they're not in great shape as adults, as I recall, any of them. Which is which is would make sense, yeah. Because if that happens and you don't have, you don't get help, you don't get therapy, you don't have this, an adult or somebody wow. coming in. You know, abuse aside, if you get attacked by a creepy clown when you're a kid, that's gonna fuck you up too. <laughs> that is gonna fuck you up. <laughs> clown attacks are bad. Yeah, they, they have a whole clown clowning on. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> clowning on. Uh, well, the interesting thing too, I want to talk about the the film had a thirty five million dollar budget. It's gross. Really? Yeah. Wow, that's over 100 cheap. And, yeah. 100 and, it's at 117. It's probably way past that now. But that's we've talked about this a lot on this show, and I and and it's we always get kind of excited because when a, when this level of budget, when the 20 to 50 million dollar movie does really well, because right. Hollywood, as we talked about on the regular episode, it gets so hung up on the 150 to 200 million dollar big budget superhero thing. So like they make these five million dollar movies and then they make these one hundred and fifty million dollar movies. So yeah. when they make a thing like this, it was thirty five million and it was really obviously it was on a lot of special effects because it's not right. like it's littered with big name stars. Well, I mean, no, not at all. And it was like a lot of practical effects, which yeah. were really, really cool. And practical effects are creepy as shit. And it proves that you don't need stars to make nope. a successful horror movie. The other thing that's an anomaly about this film. Mm is studios, big studios generally don't know how to do horror. They're usually awful when they do horror movies. And how many Stephen King books have they ruined? Right. We just had another one this year. The Dark Tower was terrible. And uh, the innovation and the interesting things in horror has usually been the indie horror movies. But this is this one time where this is a, a decent budget studio horror movie that actually delivered because I really feel like it took the lessons of the indie horror movies and applied them to a big budget studio uh, movie. Yeah, and I think the lesson they applied correctly was this is a property that people, everybody knows this book. Because the evidence in that, too, the first teaser trailer that they released for this got 197 million views online. Right. Did it really? Yeah, yeah it beat man. Fast and the Furious, uh, The Fate of the Furious, which had 139 million views. Really? So I think uh, wow. guys people like you, all the this. people that well, I read... also watched it three times because the trailer was so fucking good. Yeah, right. exactly. They, they they had a property that people loved. 
I don't think anyone remembers the old, you know, the one from the 90s or whatever, but everybody knows right. the book. Everybody knows Stephen King. And then they cut together the creepiest goddamn trailer. We, how, many, how many horror trailers have we watched on this show and gone, ugh, like I've seen it, got it, yeah, you know what plenty. I mean? It's the same trailer and it's yeah. like the kid, creepy kid, ring around me, you know? <laughs> Mommy, are you there? Mommy! A fast moving thing. Yeah, just, yeah. yeah. and then there's mm-hmm. silence and then the thing, there's always the shot like, is anyone there? And then you see yeah. the thing above it. Oh, <clears throat> you lift up the sheets. And, oh, God, it's in the bed with you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the camera pans back. Well, there's going to be something there. Yeah. I wonder what's <laughs> going to be in the mirror. Your reflection? No. <laughs> um, so, yeah, this trailer was like, oh. And it wasn't just straight horror. It was like. They took the time to develop the characters, too. So you actually right. cared about the characters. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't yeah, just Yeah, that was fodder. the thing about all those kids' dialogue was they were really building those characters really well. Yeah. They were building the characters well, and and they were fully formed, you know, fourteen year olds or whatever. You know, you know what's interesting to me is, were they, I guess they were fourteen, right? Or 13, 14? somewhere in there. So you got the you got the 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 black kid. His parents have died. You got the girl who's being abused. The kid with the glasses. Do we know what his deal was? That was the one kid. I don't think we got much. We got much the out Stranger of. Things kid. Yeah, yeah. And you got the kid with Munchausen sy- syndrome, where right? his mom is acting like he's right. sick and then you've got the uh, and then you get the sort of main character kid whose who's brother has died from the clown right, who has a stutter yeah mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> the one that always stands out to me is I want to go so is the Jewish kid just fucked up because he's Jewish <laughs> like what, what there was nothing he had like no he just had to do a bar mitzvah <laughs> yeah. like, that was, that was his, that like, was that his was thing, thing is that he had to do a bar mitzvah like that was his <laughs> like he didn't I guess was his dad uncaring or yeah there was the one scene where it wasn't that brutal of a home environment it right. wasn't his dad was, was just fun. like come on I'm you're a you're not rabbi. reading this book right yeah. right that's all <laughs> it was all he yeah. said was what's it gonna look like the rabbi's kid doesn't know the Torah I mean, mm-hmm. I was like, all right, well, that dad is just. It's just, was it because he's from a very religious family? Like, I just didn't, yeah. I was like, I don't know what that one is. That, that yeah. one lost me. That one wasn't like, oh, that creeps me out. I'm like, no, I could see that. Just yeah, see that. yeah, oh, that was normal. Like, yeah. Your dad's irritating because he didn't do what you were supposed to do. Right. <laughs> like, <what? laughs> yeah, fair enough. And the dad you doesn't abuse him. He just goes, oh, fine, just take the book. You're not even yeah. reading it. Like, just, just, <laughs> just go past the creepy picture. That's your punishment. Yeah. 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 <laughs> go get murdered by the painter. <laughs> um, well, what else? What other thing before we, we, we wrap this episode up? What do you guys... Uh, I'm looking forward to the next one, mm-hmm. for sure. I really thought this was a... This is a good example of how you can update a property. Like, you know, the 90s, I'm sure if we watched that miniseries now, it would not hold up. Oh, God. Uh, just <laughs> Harry Anderson. And uh, John Does he Boy. do magic? <laughs> Does he do sleight of hand yeah. to Pennywise? He's doing card tricks <laughs> to Pennywise. <laughs> Um, where, you know, this is a property. They, they obviously took some liberties with the time frame, but that's fine. And they did a good job updating it, you know? Yeah. And they did, well, they did, they did several good things. They did a good job updating it. But then somebody like myself, haven't read the book, didn't know much about it. Yeah. Overall, fine. Like I said, my one little, and this is just more of a, a nitpicky gripe, a little too long for me. A little me. too long, sure. But that might just be because I've watched way too many movies, so I just. Right. <laughs> you uh, yeah. had things to do, do yeah. and places to be. And also for me, for someone who I don't, if I read a book, I don't like to see the movie. This is the kind of movie I want to see because it's a, I want to see the creepy clown. Right. Usually right. it's a story that I'm like, yeah, well, I know the story, so I don't want right. to see it. But this one, I'm like, well, I want to see the fucking crazy clown. Right. And how they executed all of the nightmares was was great was so cool was so innovative was creepy and scary they did a great job too with the music the music and sound design that's so important in horror like it really is important the creepy sound or the like some little thing like that and they did it in ways that were some of them were really sort of inventive to me that was like this this doesn't feel like just sort of your standard Oh well, we got to have a you know the, a door blow shut or a cat or something stupid right. like that. It was really because this thing, like you said, Dave, it was all about fear and facing your fears. Mm-hmm. And when you don't, you know, when you let your fears consume you, they get bigger and stronger and more powerful. That was always and they the thing. overtake you, or or don't recognize what you should be afraid of. Like the older bully kid who got taken out, it's because he was ignoring his fear, right? Right. That's true. He was just like, oh, I'll fine. And yeah, I'm like, better than this and not like just being like, oh, I should be a little cautious here. This yeah, is... exactly. Oh, that's a good point. Um, and the uh, the sewer p- pipeline thing. Yeah. Um, 
was was again there's another there's another example of a parent that wasn't that bad that was actually a reasonable parent the kid whose brother lost the, the main right. kid oh yeah and he comes in the garage and the dad's like well, didn't we talk about this he's like no dad and he gives the example of yeah. the of, of the, the thing the going, doll and, earth and that was the one around. adult that i was like well this is a dad who's just like man my son won't let go of won't his brother move on. and yeah. i gotta get him i gotta get him through this my wife right. is going nuts over this that was the one i was like oh he's being a reasonable parent here. yeah right um, he wasn't like awful, mm -hmm. uh, and of course, but then, the, but then the great thing is, it's that it is that story of um, the kid was right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But what's he going to do? Come home and go, okay, Dad. Look, yeah, I know. Mm -hmm. We solved it. There was a clown in a hole. Yeah. Everybody was floating. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you float too, Dad. Um, but I assume that then, I, I assume I don't know what happens, but. Like they then all those bodies came down, so then the town would find all those bodies, right? Right, because then the clown is going back to heal for twenty seven years. Yeah, so those bodies are there. So there, there was a. Then the next movie, there will have been a big killer that they didn't catch that was in the town. Yeah, and that's the other thing. Does and is that part of these? When we went into the history of oh, there was this big fire and this other thing. Is that what the town does? Is they go, oh, the oh, clowny, you know, Pennywise cradled a bunch of people. So we're going to say it was a train derailing. Like, does the whole town get together and cover up Pennywise's no, horror? Is no, I think it was just serial. They just think it was some, some sort of serial killer, as I recall. Mm -hmm. I always wonder, you know, there was a, there was a, a, I think it was in Michigan. There was a, some anarchist blew up a school and killed like fucking 80 kids or something in the early 1900s. And I always wonder if, his idea came from that also. <laughs> oh, for his inspiration. Yeah. Stephen King. Yeah. Or he just was probably abused. Uh, yeah, right. <laughs> or I mean, he just hated clowns. Theme that hated clowns. Yeah, I think he had a pretty, probably had a pretty dark childhood, is my guess. <laughs> yeah, I mean, there's no way he didn't. I mean, he's just <laughs> reveling in fucking horror. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Anything else? Oh, that's a good wrap up for sure. Looking forward to the next installment. Yeah, I'm in. And I'm I, in. I, I, like you said, it'll probably be two years. They'll probably start shooting, and then it'll be out. And that's good. I can watch one horror movie every two years. Right. <laughs> I hope they don't get big stars. I hope that because now people are going to want to do it because the first one was a. Yeah, exactly. Uh, I hope they don't. Mm -hmm. If they the do, budget will go up just on talent. Do, yeah. I hope they really cast it well. I hope it's like Mark yeah. Ruffalo or somebody that's like a really skilled actor that can play the nuances so. of, of the adult version of a kid like. Because you, the actor, would have to fill in just internally. Could be Jessica Chastain or somebody. Yeah, that you would have to fill in the 27 years as the actor yeah. to bring that across because where you would. Because we all know, like, and and if you've like been through abuse as as I have and you have, Dave, you, then you you start to remember points in your life where you're like, oh, that's why I acted. That yeah, way. yeah, yeah. Oh, I didn't realize that. Yeah. Oh, that's oh, that makes sense, and so. The adult realization, because they're going to be in their 40s, right? If they're yeah. 15, 13, 14, 15 yeah. years old and 27 years later, they're going to be at that age where you start like, oh, God, or you remember stuff or whatever. And so if you cast it, if you just go A-list to, to sell tickets, that's a mistake. I agree. But if you get skill, really skilled actors, I mean, like, like look at Spotlight. A lot of big name yeah. actors in that, mm -hmm. and they were fucking amazing. Amazing, right. you know. So if you cast it that way, then then it could it could really yeah. Well, there's actors and then there's stars, right? Right, right. And then there's <laughs> also all these guys that who were were childhood actors on shitty shows, and they just keep kicking it around Hollywood, like the Zac Efron's of the fucking world. Mm -hmm. You put someone like that in, and you're just fucked. Like they have to be actors. Yeah. So you're saying Zac Efron and Seth Rogen and all those guys, and just make it like Neighbors. <laughs> <laughs> just That's what I'm a college yes. romp. That's what um, I'm I would like to see Seth Rogen fight a clown. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Well, Dave Anthony, where can people find you on the internet? Your podcast? I'm at Dave Anthony on Twitter. My podcast is The Dollop. My album is uh, called Hothead on iTunes and Bandcamp. Nice. And then, of course, uh, Los Angeles Podcast Festival, October 6th through the 8th. Um, get tickets at LAPodfest.com, guys. It's at the Biltmore Hotel downtown, which is a fan. It's it's 
I'm not just saying this. It's the coolest venue we've had. Yeah, for yeah, sure. For sure. And, and you'll see comedy film nerds in the dollop live. Doing it live, doing the first ever Political Vigilante live. Um, we've got some of your favorite podcasts that have been in every year, some new ones. We yep. always try to mix it up. Yep. Uh, if you guys are fans of it's Chapo House, right? It's Chapo like the, Trap House. Chapo Chop mm-hmm. House. Uh, that's the first time they've been in. And uh, the podcast pros thing. If you're if you're into like if you're a new podcaster or you want to get into the podcast business or whatever, it's going to be a lot of great information. It's there, not just sure. in the past. We've just had some panels that were cool and right. informative, but a lot of you were like, "We want more." Right so, now, it's a whole program. You could go literally Friday to Sunday and just do, at, just do panels and workshops. Yeah, it's in a special part of the hotel, and and it's cool. And the downtown area is cool. And and uh, so go to lapodfest.com to get your tickets. There is no live stream, guys. It didn't make enough money last year. So so it, we can't do a thing that so costs. We're, we're actually, it lost a lot. It lost so, yeah. money. So we're so. actually making money by not doing it. So, <laughs> yeah. So this, as we said, this isn't just a uh, idle threat or whatever. The, the festival needs to have a decent year to come back. If it doesn't, we can't do it anymore because we can't compete with giant uh, billionaire corporations that charge you $400 for a weekend pass. <laughs> Which you can go down the street to. Yeah. If you're a woman. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, only if you're only if you're female, uh, can you go to an exclusion a, 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 a festival that excludes people. People like, <laughs> yeah. are transgender people not allowed in that festival either. Yeah, oh my god! Yeah, you know, like that is interesting. Yeah, mm-hmm. so I'm a, I'm a woman that trans uh, put in became a man. I'm not allowed now. I don't think so. <laughs> Great festival. No, you, awesome. no. you could go part time. Yeah, the, yeah. If you hate inclusion and uh, everybody's welcome, then don't come to LA Podfest because we've been making it for everybody for the yeah. last uh, for every podcaster for you know that's why, that's why we have the lab. So even if you're not programming the festival, you can actually yeah. record. Don't care what your gender is or nope. so, or, uh-uh. <laughs> yeah. or sexual. Or just Happy to have you come out. We just want you to identify as a podcast fan. That's the only thing you need to identify. And you'll actually see the three of us walking around. We'll be there the entire Mm -hmm. time. We'll hang out at parties, and it'll be uh, a lot of fun and inclusive as always. And it's a great, cool, awesome, beautiful. Go to the website of the Biltmore and see. It's really cool. It's got a lot of character. It's 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 our coolest venue. So it's in Ghostbusters. It's It's in in the movie Ghostbusters. Mm -hmm. Um, The original. The original. It's supposed to be in New New York City. That hotel, yeah. right? Mm-hmm. But yep. they shot it. And Mark Maron will be doing stand up at the stand up show. Oh, oh, fantastic! Just recently announced. Mm-hmm. We're gonna so there's the stand up show, uh, and we might we don't know yet, but we might make that a single ticketed event because they have a big like 900 seat room, and so like Jackie Cation is performing there, Laura House is performing there, Todd Glass, Mark Maron, uh, I'll be performing. It's already a great show. Already a fantastic show. So go to lapodfest.com. Thank you, Aaron Brungard and everybody at the ATC Worldwide Headquarters in uh, beautiful Burbank, California. My name is Graham Elwood. And I'm Chris Mancini. And as always, remember, Han shot shot first. first. You'll float, too. You'll float, too. You'll float, too. (laughs)